Hello everyone, here is my first Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Hopefully one of many, but we'll see how this goes. As to start with, I'll show you what we're going to be making here. Um, you can see these gray blocks kind of fly and bounce around like regular physics objects, but if you hold the right mouse button, they come back to rebuild themselves. And they'll actually freeze up here in the, the same form that I spawned them in. And you can let go, and go back, and kind of just have them around. It's, it's really fun to play with. Um, when you shoot it and it starts going fast, you can really see that the, the linear and angular velocity is maintained um, going back and forth, so you kind of bounce it, bounce it around, bounce back and forth. And also the code is contained within each block, so anything that doesn't have the, the time reversing code will function normally in real time. So, mixing these two um, types of physics objects and create some pretty interesting um, effects. Like, that wasn't that interesting, but I'm sure you guys have better ideas than I do. See, I'm, I'm just playing with cubes. So I guess to start with, I'll show you how to make it. Um, in the character, in the first person character, we need a way to, to tell the cube that the button is, that the whatever button or action is being pressed. So, a simple boolean for being pressed and not pressed is, is really all you need. And I added a post-process effect to indicate whether the, the time is going forward or backward. It's not necessary, but I added it because, I don't know, I think it's easier to, to see when you're, when you're watching it than um, when you're playing it. Um, and the, the code for the cube is here. If you want to just pause it and copy all this, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to be explaining every every piece and kind of show you what it does, but there's only three variables and one component with simulate physics checked, and that that's basically it as a as a static mesh. So to start with, when the game starts, it casts to the first person character and saves that as a um, as a variable. If you want a quick way of of creating this type of variable. You can just drag this off and click Promote to Variable, rename it, do all that stuff, and then you have it. It's a lot easier than trying to add a variable going into the object types and all that stuff. So let's leave this out here, reset it. Um, so the way this works is every frame, the, the location, rotation, scale, linear, and angular velocity, are all saved to two different arrays. Um, and whenever the mouse button is being held, it kind of backs through that array and reapplies the, the data. So these two lines in the sequence basically do the same thing. This one is for location, rotation, scale. And this one is for the velocities. Uh, here we have a character reference with the right button pressed. This is you know, what's being cast. Um, this is the branch that tells it whether the button's being pressed, and, um, whether it should just add the, the transform of the static mesh, or whether it should rewrite it. And the way that rewriting it works is it looks at the array, it finds the last index, gets it, and then sets the world trans transform. And that's pretty much it. This piece at the end, um, it, and when it finishes, it deletes the, the index at the end. The, this branch here is to make sure that players don't uh, back through the beginning of the game, because it will actually delete the first index if they do, and it starts spinning out all these errors and gets really confused from my experience. Um, here, I did something kind of weird with the transform struct. Since it's a... Uh, you know, three three types of variables kind of packed into one. I'm kind of abusing the, the fact that it has two vectors, since we're trying to save two different types of vector data. So it, it just saves on um, the, the number of arrays here. You could easily just add two, you know, regular vector arrays, and it would work just fine. You just need to add another, another set of this. Um, but in that, it works exactly the same. 
when the button isn't being pressed, it gets the linear velocity, gets the angular velocity, makes it into the transform, and then adds it to the array. And then, you know, applies, sets physics, sets angular, and removes. I need to make sure that you have this unchecked, because otherwise it'll, you know, it'll just add the, the velocity that it thinks it should have, and it won't be accurate, and you'll notice it, it does some pretty weird things. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, I did a little bit of testing with this, and you can actually copy that chunk of code and drag it into the player character, and make sure you have the two variables. That's where these things are from, if anyone noticed that. Um, and that makes it so that when you move around as a player, jump around, you know, doing player things, that they'll actually reverse through the same way that the cubes do. They still have control over their camera, which you could save as another rotation um, vector, but it kind of just, you know, if you're trying to keep everything in sync, this would be a, one a good way of doing it. Um, I think that's everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and have a great day.